In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning. Good morning, Father. And welcome to the Maya Basilica and Shrine of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag. Today we celebrate the sixth Sunday of Easter. In view of Jesus' impending departure to be with his Father in heaven, we are reminded that we will not be left orphans. Jesus promises his disciples that he will come back. Moreover, the Father will send his Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. The Advocate will make the presence of Jesus among us, his disciples, more intense and more fruitful. The Holy Spirit will make us know and understand Jesus as we have never understood before. Brothers and sisters, as we come together thanking God, thanking the Lord, thanking our Blessed Mother for all the blessings that we receive in our life, we certainly come in order to continue our prayers, to ask the intercession of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag to help us in our daily needs, not only for ourselves, but also for our loved ones. So let us now make ourselves worthy of this holy celebration. Once again, let us ask God's forgiveness for all the sins that we have committed. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant Almighty God that we may celebrate with heart heartfelt devotion these days of joy, which we keep in honor of the risen Lord, and that what we relieve in remembrance, we may always hold on to it what we do. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. During the Council of Jerusalem, the apostles and elders decided that pagans converted to Christianity should not be burdened with his strictly Jewish practices. The one thing necessary for salvation is faith in the Lord Jesus. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Some who had come down from Judea were instructing the brothers, unless you are circumcised according to the Mosaic practice, you cannot be saved because there arose no little dissension and debate by Paul and Barnabas with them. It was decided that Paul, Barnabas, and some of the others should go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and elders about this question. The apostles and elders, in agreement with the whole church, decided to choose representatives and to send them to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas. The ones chosen were Judas, who was called Barsabas, and Silas, leaders among the brothers. This is the letter delivered by them. The apostles and the elders, your brothers, to the brothers in Antioch, Syria and Cilicia of Gentile origin. Greetings. Since we have heard that some of our number who went out without any mandate from us have upset you with their teachings and disturbed your peace of mind, we have with one accord decided to choose representatives 
and to send them to you along with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, who have dedicated their lives to the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we are sending Judas and Silas, who will also convey this same message by word of mouth. It is the decision of the Holy Spirit and of us not to place on you any burden beyond these necessities, namely to abstain from meat sacrificed to idols, from blood, from meats of strangled animals, and from unlawful marriage. If you keep free of this, you will be doing what is right. Farewell. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May God have pity on us and bless us. May he let his face shine upon us. So may your way be known upon earth, among all nations, your salvation. May the nations be glad and exult because you rule the peoples in equity, the nations on the earth you guide. May the peoples praise you, O God. May all the peoples praise you. May God bless us and may all the ends of the earth fear him. The book of Revelation depicts a new heavenly Jerusalem. This new city is splendid and magnificent because God is its center and heart. The city symbolizes God's people. A reading from the book of Revelation. The angel took me in spirit to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God. It gleamed with splendor of God. Its radiance was like that of a precious stone, like jasper, clear as crystal. It had a massive high wall with 12 gates where 12 angels were stationed and on which names were inscribed, the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. There were three gates facing east, three north, three south, and three west. The wall of the city had twelve courses of stone as its foundation, on which were inscribed the twelve names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb. The city had no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gave it light, and its lamp was the lamp. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Whoever loves me will keep my word, says the Lord, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, yet the word you hear is not mine, but that of the Father who sent me. I have told you this while I am with you. The Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have told you. Peace I live with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. You heard me tell you, I am going away and I will not come back to you. If you love me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it happens, so that when it happens, you may believe. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Siguro, nagsasawa na rin kayo sa mga naririnig nyo tungkol sa otos sa salita ng ating Panginoon tungkol sa pagmamahal o pagmamahalan, love. So, sa kanyang mga pagtuturo, Palagi, palagi nire-remind tayo ng ating Panginoon to obey the commandments and to love one another. And into this gospel, again, we heard Jesus reminding His disciples Whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. Sa palagay ko, hanggang hindi natin masusunod ang utos at turo ng ating Panginoon tungkol sa pagmamahalan, hindi ito mawawala sa pangangaral sa atin, lalong-lalo na tayong mga Kristiyano. Bakit? Kasi ito yung turo at utos ng ating Panginoon na hindi pa natin nasusunod. Na hindi pa natin na isa sa buhay, na isa gawa. Sino ba sa atin ang makasabi talaga na tapat tayo sa pagmamahal. Sino sa atin makasabi na hindi tayo nagkukulang sa pagsunod sa otos ng ating Panginoon to love God with all our hearts, with all our minds, with all our strengths, 
and added to that to love our neighbor as ourselves. And neighbor are not only those who are good to us, di ba? Yung mga kapitbahay, hindi lamang yung pinapautang natin, binibigyan natin ng ulam, o binabahagian natin kung anong meron tayo. Our neighbor, hindi lamang yung nakakatanggap tayo ng pasalubong o pinapasalubungan natin dahil malapit sila sa puso natin. Hindi. Dinagdaga ng ating Panginoon yan. At sino? Ang dapat nating mahalin pa? Ang ating kaaway. Sa palagay ko, <laughs> Dito sa pangalawa na bahagi ng neighbor, eh, hindi ko lang alam kung ilang sa atin ang tapat sa pagsunod sa autos ng ating Panginoon, How to Love. Kaya hanggang hindi natin magagawa ito, sa buong buhay natin, we will be reminded always this precept of love. At kung tingnan natin sa panahong ngayon, ito yung kailangan eh. Ito yung kailangan Kapag pakinggan at balikan natin yung awit ni Jackie Jesianon ng pamagat What the world now needs is love. At sinasabi dito, What the world needs now is love. Sweet love. It's the only thing that there's just too little of. What the world needs now is love, sweet love, not just for some, but for everyone. Ito yung realidad ngayon. Ito yung realidad ngayon. Kaya ito yung panalangin natin. Sa ngayon, hindi na natin kailangan yung mountain, another mountain. Lord, we don't need another mountain. There are mountains and hillsides enough to climb. At actually, totoo yan eh. Sa sobra-sobra ng bundok, anong ginagawa natin? Hindi lamang natin inaakyat, sinisira pa, kinakalbo pa. So kailangan pa ba natin yung bundok? Kailangan pa ba natin yung mga hills, plateau? Hindi na. Hindi na. Sinisira lang natin. Ganun din. There are oceans and rivers enough to cross, enough to last till the end of time. Totoo yan. We have three parts of the earth is water. Kaya nung ginagawa natin sa ating mga oceans and rivers, ay gan, sinisira natin. Hinuhukay natin yung mga black sands. Minimina natin, sinisira natin ang mga seizures. At sa sobra-sobra, sa sobra-sobra na pagsisira, ayun bumabawi. Why? Because we have enough. Hindi natin kailangan. Kaya sisirain na lang. 
มีมินายในหลังวิดูนนิดอันอื่นมีดูส์ there are corn fields and wheat fields enough to grow เฮ้ดิทุรันสเปลิปินาเซ we are agricultural land ดินนั้นที่หิลิงินเกลังันหิลิงินสัตย์ยุสนะไม่ได้บัดดักกันมันมันยุงลูปะนั่นเองนี่เด้ดิทุนเรื่องสปังคัสินานี่ทั้งหลายไม่ยามันสลุปะแต่ลุงกินกวานนั่นเองเดลสุบราสุบราเนี่ยงไรส์ฟิลด์นั่นเองคอร์นฟิลด์นั่นเองสีสิมินตุหินนั่นเอง Gagawin nating subdivisions, di ba? Di ba totoo yung mga sinasabi ko? Pagdumaan kayo sa Edlex, paglabas nyo sa Manila, pagdating nyo sa Teplex o sa Isetex, Teplex. Ano makikita nyo? Yung mga dating rice field? Ano na ang ginawa? Either subdivisions or subdivisions ng mga patay? Factories? Simintadong gubat ang nakikita natin. Bakit? Is it because we need more these things in our life? Sa palagay ko, bago ginawa ng Diyos ang tao, sinabi na God prepared everything. God created everything in order that when God made man, There are read things that man will use for his life. Sapat ang ginawa ng Dios na kailangan natin sa buhay natin kung ang bawat isa sa atin ay sensitive enough. For the needs of other people, yung parang sa pamilya, bibili ka ng family size na pizza at tamang tama, tamang tama sa paghati sa walo dahil walo kayo sa pamilya, nanay, tatay at Anim na anak. Ngayon, kapag isang anak, sabihin natin yung malakas, mahusay, may karapatan, kukuha ng dalawang slice ng pizza. Ano mangyari? Magkakain bang lahat? Hindi. Hindi. Merong isang magsasakripisyo. Bakit? Kasi, kinuha ng malakas ang bahagi ng mahina. At itong mundo ngayon, itong mundo ngayon, pag tinignan natin, bakit maraming naghihirap? Bakit maraming nagugutom? Hindi dahil kulang ang ginawa ng Diyos. Ngunit, maraming may makapangyarihan ang kumamkam para sa mga mahihina, para sa mga mahihirap. Ito ba ay pagmamahal? 
pagmamahal sa kapwa o pagmamahal sa sarili. Kaya Jesus will always remind us the commandments of, of love hanggang hindi natin ito maisa gawa. Love will always be the teaching. And that is why St. Paul and Barabbas in their mission continue to preach the words of Jesus. At sigurado ako na bahagi sa preaching ni San Pablo ang pagmamahal. Love is patient, love is kind. When you do things, even you give everything that you have, but without love, nothing. So still, even the apostles continue to preach about love. Kamusta sa bahay natin? Kamusta ang ating ginagawa? Tuloy-tuloy ba ang ating pagmamahal? Pag binigyan ka ng asawa, paano mong pagmat mapatunayan na mahal mo siya. Ang tunay na pagmamahal ay nag-aalay ng kanyang buhay. Ang tunay na nagmamahal ay binibigay ang kanyang kakayahan. Kapag tiningnan natin ang tunay na pagmamahal, nakapako sa cross. Binigay lahat because of love. God so loved the world that He gives His only Son to us in order to save us. Ganun ang Diyos. Kaya napakaganda kung maalaala natin Itong salita ng ating Panginoon. Na when we love, whoever loves me will keep my words and my Father will love him. And we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. Di ba? Imagine, ang Diyos mismo ang maninirahan sa atin kapag marunong tayo magmahal. Ang Diyos mismo, gagawin tayo ng Diyos na kanyang templo. Hindi na tayo kailangan pupunta dito sa simbahan ng manawag. Kasi nandiyan na ang Diyos sa ating puso. Ayon, kapag ang salita ng Diyos na pagmamahal ay nasa puso na natin. Kasi ang salita na yon will become flesh and dwelt among us. Tayo na mismo ang katulad ng mahal na Birhen, we will bear the Son of God, our Lord Jesus Christ. The word that we hear from the teachings of the apostles will become flesh in us. At kung magiging tao na sa atin ang salita ng Diyos, then, we will experience what our second reading is telling us.
will be in the new heavens because we will be in there. We need no sunbeams, need no moonbeams, and that is because the presence of God in our heart is enough to shine, to give light to our life. So my dear friends, you can listen again to Jackie DeShannon, reminding you what the world needs now is love, sweet love. We all stand. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. As we remember the words and promises of Christ, we pray to you, dear Father, that you may pour out your Holy Spirit to lead us to take the path of truth and charity, entering fully into your divine life. With faith and love we pray, be gracious to us, Lord. Be gracious to us, Lord. For Pope Francis, our bishops, priests, deacons, and religious men and women, may the Spirit's gift of wisdom and understanding direct their ministry towards the way of peace we pray be gracious to us lord for our duly elected national and local leaders may the lord give them health grace and wisdom so that they may become more responsible accountable and trustworthy in fulfilling their mandate we pray be gracious to us lord for the sick the lonely the destitute and those who suffer in any way. Make them well, body and soul, and restore them towards fullness of life in Christ with their families and the church. We pray. Be gracious to us, Lord. For our beloved dead, may they shine with the radiance of your glory in your kingdom. We pray. Be gracious to us, Lord. Let us pray for the urgent concerns of our community and our personal intentions. We pray. Be gracious to us, Lord. We include also in our prayers the intentions of this Mass, our very own personal intentions and prayers. We remember those who are celebrating the birth of today or the anniversaries. Father, send us your spirit of faithfulness and love. Make us your dwelling place here on earth. May we keep your word and grow in your love. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
please stand. Pray, my dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. May our prayers rise up to you, Lord, together with our sacrificial offerings, so that glorified by your graciousness, we may be informed to the mysteries of your mighty love. To Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is really right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to load you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, an integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with fiscal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together than ending him of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift you pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate a memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have healed us worthy 
to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we might be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Socrates our Archbishop, Fidelis his assistant bishop, Gerard, our master of the order, the religious, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with our Father Saint Dominic, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Please stand. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the hope of your mercy we might be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ has said to the apostles, Peace I love you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever 
and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Please kneel. Behold Jesus, the risen Lord, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but, but only say the word, my and my soul shall be healed. Please stand. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food to Christ our Lord. Amen. Gusto ko include in your prayers our frontliners here in the Minor Basilica of Our Lady of the Rosary 
of Manawag. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has been offered. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now have the blessing of our sick brothers and sisters. Please, in silence, remember the names of your loved ones who are sick, and we offer these prayers. We will also bless your religious articles. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. Let us pray. God, our Almighty Father, by your blessing, you give us strength and support in our frailty. To be kind, restore our sick brothers and sisters free them from all illness, and restore them to good health through the intercession of our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag, so that in the sure knowledge of your goodness, they will gratefully bless your holy name. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For your religious articles, wag na po tayo uh, lumapit. Doon na lang po tayo uh, maiwan kung saan tayo nakatayo o nakaupo uh, man. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. Let us pray. In memory of the mysteries of the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, to the honor and glory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of Christ, Mother of the Church, Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag, Mules Rosaries, Images, Candles, Oil, and other religious articles, be blessed and made holy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.